is unsustainable and an incredibly gross level of consumption in a normal week, let alone when we were in the middle of a pandemic. So yeah, that infuriates me, um, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Hello lovely people, I'm Izzy aka The Quirky Environmentalist and over here on this YouTube channel and my blog I talk about sustainable living, ethical fashion, environmental issues, all of that jazz and today we're talking about everything wrong with Pretty Little Thing. Now there's a reason I'm talking about Pretty Little Thing rather than any other fast fashion or fashion brands and that's because one of my most popular posts with Google and a post that still gets me like 40 to 60 page views a week is a review I did seven years ago of Pretty Little Thing. Now this was back in the day where I still bought from fast fashion brands. Um, one of my other most popular posts is a Lolita clothing um, tutorial page. I had an interesting niche back then but obviously this Pretty Little Thing post does not fit with my current sustainable and ethical branding at all so I was debating just deleting the post entirely and doing away with it but I thought I would do something slightly more productive and that is to put a disclaimer at the start of the post basically to say this doesn't fit with what I believe now and here's why and here are some sustainable brands you can buy from instead if you're looking for new clothes because although people don't tend to stay on the page very long um, I do think that even if I can get one or two people a month just to think about sustainable and ethical clothing then that that's a good thing and also that's why this video is here because if you like Pretty Little Thing then well I'm going to tell you some reasons you might not. I also do want to put out that this video could be about pretty much any of the big fashion and fast fashion brands they all differ slightly but a lot of the issues Pretty Little Thing has they all have I'm just specifically making about them because obviously I wrote about them seven years ago. So yes what is wrong with Pretty Little Thing? Um, I'm going to talk about this in a couple of different sections and you're probably wondering where I'm going to get into this video so I'll get into it now. First off I want to talk about the issue with transparency. Now what this basically means is um, knowing about where Pretty Little Things clothes have come from and who has made them. Um, I had a scour through their website, I looked through their FAQs, I looked in the little bottom bits to try and find some kind of link to anything even just a statement saying we are committed to ethical like making our supply chain more ethical anything along those lines and I couldn't find well anything really now even brands like misguided have pages on how they're committed to a more ethical supply chain I'm not sure it means much but it's something H&M and Primark you can now go on their website and view where they've got their factories now these are a bit iffy because on H&M's website a t-shirt says it could be made in any of like seven factories and you still don't know whether the people in these factories are paid fairly and treated fair well but it's a step in the right direction whereas on Pretty Little Things website I can find absolutely nothing on the topic which is worrying. And in Fashion Revolution's 2020 Transparency Index they scored a total of 8% which I think speaks for itself. Now, why is this an issue? Well, that's because of the fashion supply chain. Basically, a large portion of the fashion industry, as we know it, relies on modern day slave labor, underpaying their workers, and a lot of garment workers, farmers, those that work in the industry are seriously mistreated. I'm not saying these things are definitely happening in Pretty Little Things, supply chain but because there's no transparency we can't guarantee that they're not and when 77% of British retailers surveyed believe there's modern day slavery in their supply chain, when 90% of garment workers don't have any access to negotiating their pay, any kind of unions and when a large portion of those working in the supply chain have very unsteady work and are barely making ends meet then you can't guarantee that these things are not happening in Pretty Little Supplies supply chain and that's the problem and without having a transparent supply chain if these things are happening in the supply chain then you have no way of fixing it there's a lot more to this in the supply chain um in the ways that people are mistreated in the fact that factory collapses and fires are still happening a lot of people are still unsafe in their working environments a lot of pe a lot of women because 80% of garment workers are women face 
um, sexual harassment and other forms of violence and harassment in the workplace. This is not one or two companies doing things bad. This is a systematic issue within the entire fashion supply chain. And without a transparent supply chain, there is no hope to fix these issues. So I'm asking you, pretty little thing, who is making your clothes and can you guarantee the people that are buying clothes from you are not supporting slave labour and exploitation? Can you? As I said, there's lots more to this. If you want to know more, I did a video for Fashion Revolution Week about why we need a fashion revolution and that goes through a lot of stats about who's making your clothes and what's in your clothes and why we need transparency in the industry. So that's definitely worth a watch. But basically, things in the fast fashion supply chain are not good and we cannot fix these without some form of transparency and as far as I can tell, Pretty Little Thing have none. So... That's not good. Secondly, I want to talk about their sustainability. Now here is a place where Pretty Little Thing are trying to earn brownie points, but personally, I don't think they're doing a very good job of it. First of all, Pretty Little Thing have partnered with the Regain app. Now a lot of big brands, Boohoo, which is their sister company, um, I think Misguided, there's lots of big brands on this app. and. In practice, I don't think that it's a bad thing. Essentially what the Regain app does is you put your clothes in a bag or you donate them straight to a charity shop and instead of going straight to landfill, they end up going to be recycled or to charity shops. And the reward you get is money off clothing. Now, encouraging more people to donate their clothes so that they get a chance at a second life instead of just putting them straight in landfill, amazing, great love the premise. In practice it's not ideal necessarily, first of all because you're getting a token off these websites so they're encouraging you after you've gotten rid of clothes to go and buy more clothes. Now this is not sustainable, the idea of getting rid of old clothes um, and having a more sustainable wardrobe is having less clothes, enjoying what you've got, buying things second hand, you know, these are the <laughs> sort of essence of having a sustainable wardrobe and getting rid of clothes to just buy more is not a very sustainable mindset. Secondly, I had a look on the Regain app website and I couldn't find that much information about where their clothing actually goes. It said it goes to charity shops and to be recycled and that's about it. There's no transparency in tracing the clothes after they've left the hands of Regain and this is a little bit iffy to me. Now, Ghana has the largest second-hand market in West Africa and possibly the world. It's called, hang on, it's called Cantamanto and this market gets 15 million pieces of clothing every week to be sold on. Ghana has a population of 30 million. That would suggest that every single person in Ghana is buying to make this even, every single person in Ghana is buying two pieces of clothing every single week. And most of these clothes come from the West. They come from clothes that haven't been sold in charity shops. They come from clothes that are just going straight over there. We are essentially dumping our waste into countries like Ghana, which then it's their problem because they have a massive issue now in Ghana with textiles ending up in landfill there. Um, and that's showing us their stats as that Ghana are really bad at recycling textiles and Ghana are so bad with <laughs> how much waste textiles are producing but those textiles are coming from us and we're feeling good about getting rid of them and the reason this is happening is because more people are donating secondhand clothes than, than are buying them and so there's a disparity there automatically um, and that's also why giving people a voucher for new clothes to donate them is kind of not ideal. So what I want from Regain app is they're saying that they're closing the loop on fashion. Great. But I want more evidence that they're actually doing that and that they're making sure that these clothes are not just ending up in landfill in Ghana or somewhere else in the world. That they are actually being reused and actually being resold. So yeah, great idea, but it needs work in the actual execution, I think. Next up is Pretty Little Things Recycled Collection. I don't know why it is recycled, but um, this, a lot of fast fashion brands have been bringing out conscious collections, recycled collections, sustainable collections, 
as a way to seem more green. Again, like the idea of clothing, textiles being recycled, and this also fits in with the regain thing, the idea that, I don't think this is how it works, but regain, take the clothes, recycled into new textiles, pretty little thing, make new textiles. That's circular. Great. But, um, I don't think that's what actually what's happening, and the portion of Pretty Little Things clothing that are their recycled collection is tiny, so it looks like kind of just a marketing ploy of, oh we are doing sustainable things, look at this collection we've got, rather than changing their entire model, which would be a lot of work, to make all of their clothing more sustainable. Another issue I have with this recycled collection is that almost every piece of clothing in it has some form of polyester in it, which is plastic, and there are debates about whether recycled polyester is actually good for use in clothing because the problem is whenever you wash your clothes fibres come out of them and those plastic fibres are going into the oceans and are being ingested by um, plants, fish and ultimately us. Humans now consume a credit card's worth of plastic I think it's every week from what we eat and it's coming from things like our clothing when we wash it and so <laughs> sure you're recycling polyester and stopping it going into landfill, but there are better ways to recycle polyester than into clothing where it's going to be continually washed and those fibres are going to go straight into the sea. Some some brands do use recycled polyester almost exclusively and I'm not saying it is inherently horrifically bad but almost all of their pieces have some form of polyester in them, even the cotton ones, like you would think they could at least make a few 100% cotton garments rather than 50-50. Also, these pieces of clothing are still only 10 or 15 pounds each. You are seriously telling me that you are managing to make sustainably made, all through the production line, and ethically made clothing for 10 pound a dress or a bikini, because I don't, I don't believe that. Um, and it also doesn't tell you where these clothes are going. Sure, they're made of recycled materials, but a lot of clothes in these supply chains end up going to six or eight different countries before ending up in a warehouse ready to be shipped out to you that's not sustainable either. And again, no transparency, we don't know where these clothes have been, we don't know the air miles or the sea miles that these clothes are having on them before they're getting to us. So a sustainable collection, although it's made of recycled materials, isn't inherently sustainable all the way through. And I really think that Pretty Little Thing are making this collection to score brownie points rather than because they genuinely care about the environment. Sure, both of these things are steps in the right direction towards sustainability, but they are way below even the bare minimum of sustainability. And Pretty Little Thing are still putting out hundreds of new items of clothing a week, which I will get into in the next section. So we've had a look at the general supply chain issues of Pretty Little Thing, and these are sort of the inherent issues with them, but I now want to look at their response to COVID-19 and the current pandemic because I think that kind of shows you a lot about their business practices. The general consensus from pretty much all countries that are in some kind of lockdown is only essential workers are working. Everyone else is staying home to protect everyone and <laughs> to stop people dying. Now these essential workers that are going out include cleaners, porters, any NHS staff, people who provide food, supermarket workers, that are doing essential work that is keeping people going through this time. I would argue that fashion is not an essential at the moment. Sure people need to wear clothes, but you don't need a whole new wardrobe at the moment. And I saw I saw it first saying that you need a post quarantine or quarantine exit outfit. You do not. <laughs> Those things are just not a necessity right now. And Pretty Little Thing have put a disclaimer on their website or a little thing basically saying how they're protecting their workers during coronavirus and how vulnerable people are at home and people in their warehouses are staying two metres apart so they're following the basic guidelines. But I would argue that you shouldn't be making your workers work at all. Furlough them. You couldn't afford to... Like, the owners of Pretty Little Thing are billionaires their father owns Boohoo and they're a family of billionaires. So it's a very different thing, like small businesses still continuing to work where they can and ship out orders to try and feed their families and pay their bills to billionaires keeping their business open because they want to make more money. They can afford to 
furlough their staff and pay their um, suppliers and close down their business or at least go down to a very short skeleton crew business to try and like, I don't know, move stock or just keep things going even a little bit. But no, they're choosing to operate business at as usual. And sure, they're following the government guidelines. They say they are anyway. But they're still putting their workers at risk for the sake of fashion and for the sake of making more money. And when you're hearing reports of ASOS workers walking out um, and Amazon workers feeling incredibly unsafe in warehouses because of the current pandemic and scared to go into work, then you do wonder what's actually happening with the people that work in these warehouses. And there were also reports of Pretty Little Thing workers in the Tinsley warehouse feeling unsafe too. Why would you not just furlough your workers and play it safe? You can't afford to. You, you're you billionaires. I went on their website when I was first deciding to write this post and they put up 56 new items and I was like, whoa, that's a lot of items. Turns out that was a slow day. In the week following they put out, out 662 items in total. Um, one day I checked it was 118. So on average every day they're still putting up 88 items of clothing on their website in the middle of a pandemic. They're also definitely capitalising on the fact that people want loungewear and summerwear because it's nice outside. Um, so they're still making their supply chains work because they're obviously bringing in clothes that they believe people need at the moment. And they're putting their people in their supply chains at risk when they could afford, again, to pay their supply chains and say, be safe, take some time off. This level of consumption, 662 new items, new different items of clothing on their website a week, is unsustainable and an incredibly gross level of consumption in a normal week, let alone when we were in the middle of a pandemic. So yeah, that infuriates me, um, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Moving on from the current pandemic, um, I, think <laughs> I think you get the idea there. I want to talk about something that was I found scrolling through Twitter a couple of weeks ago and that is blackfishing. Now if you're not sure what blackfishing is, it's essentially where usually white women um, will take on the traits of black women, whether that's getting lip fillers, getting their <laughs> um, a tan, changing their hair, getting surgery, to look usually like light-skinned black women, um, mixed race women, or to look I suppose the trend is like racially ambiguous um, in order to make money, to gain clout on the internet, to be trendy, whatever, <laughs> without then taking on the racism and discrimination and any other issues that black women actually face for living their life as black women. I'll put links in the description to black women talking about blackfishing and why it's an issue and also the original thread on Twitter in the description, so if you want to learn more about that, you can. Um, but basically, there's this Swedish model, and I'm not gonna name her because I don't want to give her the clout, but basically this was what she looked like before she started blackfishing, this is what she looks like without makeup on, and this is what she looks like in the Pretty Little Thing advert. There are a lot of replies to the thread on Twitter, like, this is a white girl, because she, like, it, the photo speaks for itself um, and the reason people have an issue with this is well it's not like a secret that she's been doing this if you search her name it comes up with the blackfishing scandal so pretty little thing even if they'd done a tiny bit of research on their model would have known that this was happening so either they didn't do any research or they chose to ignore the fact that this was happening and she's essentially taken a job from an actual black woman because of the features that she has appropriated. Now Pretty Little Thing like this style, I suppose it's like the Instagram baddie style, is that still a thing? I <laughs> I don't know, but if you scroll through their website you'll see a lot of the look they like is this light skin mixed race models or white models with lip fillers and tans and all the rest of it and yeah she's in here looking like she's actually black. Um, and I haven't again yet seen pretty little thing respond to this if there is a response I will put it up um, when I'm editing but and if you find one feel free to send me it but yeah this is just another thing of them seeming not to actually genuinely care about their consumers and black women but 
just trying to make money off them. Uh, don't do this. Um, learn to love your own skin. Do not appropriate features from people of other ethnicities because that is gross and fetishy and yeah, just just refrain from doing that and try not to support people, other people who do it, please. Yeah, so yeah, that is that. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I encourage you either to think next time you want to buy from a brand like this or just to send them an email and basically ask them who made their clothes, what's in their clothes and demand them to be more transparent about their business operations because we can't improve the fashion supply chain and life for people within the fashion supply chain or make it more sustainable without some level of transparency. Um, the links to read about more of this, so from the fashion industry, issues within the fashion industry, sustainability, black fishing, and I hope you get the general idea. Um, I have a blog post linked to read more about this if you want to share that. Give me your thoughts, opinions in the comments. If you have anything to add or any questions then leave those below. Anything else you want me to talk about specifically, again, <laughs> I talk about sustainable living, ethical fashion and environmental issues on this channel so subscribe for more of that and I will see you sometime in the near future. Thank you for watching. Thank you.